My boss, Jim Wright, told me to give me a quick tour of the hotel so I could see just how extensive the electrical upgrades were going to be. During this time, he met with the hotel owners in their office. I walked around the pool area, wisely not letting anyone know that I was trying to get as good a look as possible at all the possible cleavage. That's when I saw a 40-year-old red-haired beauty chatting with a man. He was clearly several years younger than her. They pulled their lounge chairs closer together, and the man put his hand on her left knee. At the same time, his elbow was in constant contact with the lady's left breast. I immediately hurried away from the pool area, relaxing only when I was out of sight of the pool. I considered my options for 20 seconds. Instinctively, I knew what I had to do. But I spent some time thinking about the consequences and saw only one worthy course of action. I took out my cell phone and sent a quick message to my boss, after which he carefully returned to the pool area, remaining as unnoticed as possible. I stood in the shade of the balcony where my phone camera was mounted, slowly counted to 25 and began filming the couple I had spotted earlier. The woman lay on a lounge chair with her bikini top undone as the man slowly applied sunscreen to her back, paying particular attention to the impressive side of her breasts that jutted out from her torso and was on full display. I had only been filming the video for a few seconds when a clearly angry man ran up to the couple. He grabbed a fistful of the man's lotioned hair and mercilessly pulled his head back. This exposed the man's chin and throat. I easily heard the blow as the angry man's fist met Romeo's throat. This was followed by a second blow, this time to the chin. The man, who a few seconds ago was caring for the red-haired beauty, was now lying on the side of the pool and making terrible vomiting sounds. It all happened so quickly that the woman barely had time to look back to see a very angry man rubbing his fist as he stood over her. This lasted a few seconds before he grabbed her red locks. Jim! She only managed to shout before he lifted her to her feet by her hair. I was still recording, so I captured her loose but rather perky breasts, bouncing as the man turned her around to face him. You're a fucking slut, was all he could say, looking at his wife's panicked face and then down at her dangling breasts. I was worried for a moment that he was going to hit her too, but luckily he controlled his anger and simply pushed her backwards into the pool. He threw several chairs and plastic tables across the deck before he saw me standing to the side. He visibly slouched and walked towards me. Mike, get me to the damn car before I end up in jail, was all he could say as tears rolled down his cheeks. I led Jim into the parking lot and directed him to the company SUV. By this time, he was a complete zombie, showing no emotion and staring straight ahead as I drove down the highway. The two-hour drive home was eerily silent, save for the occasional guttural sound that escaped Jim's throat. I parked in his driveway and walked him into the house. Jim sat at the kitchen table while I took two bottles of beer out of the refrigerator. I placed one in front of him and opened the second for myself, after which I sat down on the chair opposite him. His gaze made me feel a little uneasy. In the end, I looked into his eyes for a few seconds before asking, Have we received a contract? Jim blinked at my question and then suddenly burst into laughter. You're a stupid bastard, he muttered, opening his beer and taking a long sip. My question may have been stupid, but it brought Jim out of his trance. That lying bitch said she was going to spend a few days with her mother at her parents' lake house. She left yesterday morning. She must have been having sex with that damn Harris since yesterday. Crap. This morning, I called her mother's cabin and asked to speak with Callie. Her mother said that she was in the shower, but that she would ask her to call me back. Callie called about ten minutes later. If she was in her mother's bathroom at the lake at ten in the morning, there's no way she'd have arrived in Timberbrook by the time you found her with that bastard, One Egg Harris. That means her mother covered for her, I concluded. That means her mother knew what the hell Callie was doing and was covering for her. Jim echoed my thoughts. Hell! She's visited her mother at the cabin every summer since we got married. Now I have to wonder how long this shit has been going on, and whether this idiot was the first, or just one, of many. Jim made a good point, and I thought about it from every possible angle as I drove home. It seemed possible and even probable that Jim's wife was aided and abetted in her infidelity by her own mother. 
Maybe this is a hereditary trait or just some kind of weakness brought up over generations. As I approached my entrance, I saw my mother-in-law's car. I didn't want to listen to her nonsense, so I parked and walked to the back door, knowing that my wife Tracy would be sitting with her mother at the kitchen table drinking wine. As usual, I was right. The only thing I didn't expect was the volume of the conversation. To be honest, both the volume and the content of the conversation shocked me a little. Holy shit, Mom! Tracy practically screamed at her mother. You know how Dad hates identical? What the hell were you thinking? I couldn't help but feel a little proud at Tracy's outrage at her mother's actions. She and I promised to be faithful throughout our married life. Tracy and I were definitely on the same page on this issue. Please don't call Bentley identical. It was an accident. Besides, he's still capable of performing well, Callie insisted. That's not the point, Tracy replied. You were on the street in broad daylight with a man who was not my father and only two hours away from home. I warned you not to let your guard down, but you did it anyway. I thought we were far enough from home to be safe. I don't know how your father ended up there or how he found us at the pool. He never goes to hotels, much less their swimming pools. Do you think he's cheating on me? No, I, I don't think so, Tracy replied. Dad adores you. He would never cheat, and I'm sure he didn't even know you were cuckolding him. That's why his reaction was so violent. He must have been shocked to see identical rubbing lotion on your large breasts. Bentley only rubbed the lotion on the sides of my breasts, Callie said. He was the perfect gentleman. I'm sure that's what happened. Dad punched him in the throat and then broke his jaw for no good reason. How are you going to handle this, Mom? It looks like Dad is very angry. I'd like to stay with you for a few days until your father calms down, if you don't mind. You know how much Jim adores me. He will get over this little mistake. Maybe, unless he finds out about your other mistakes, Tracy suggested. You know they won't be well received. Did Callie make other mistakes, as Tracy called them? Does my wife know about them? She didn't seem very surprised that her mom was with Odno Yatsev. This information was alarming. Not wanting them to know that I was in the house and eavesdropping on their conversation, I quietly went out the back door and headed towards the front. When he opened the door, mother and daughter fell silent. I nodded to the silent duo as I walked over to the refrigerator and pulled out a beer. It occurred to me that they had no idea how much I knew about the day's events and were waiting for me to make clear what I knew. I turned and went upstairs to take a shower. They should be interested in how much I know, how I will react, what I will say, and who I will tell. I decided not to give them any reason to guess. This whole situation was damn unpleasant, and Tracy's role in it was disturbing, to say the least. It struck me that Tracy obviously knew her mother was promiscuous, but never told her father or me. Keeping such a secret is tantamount to lying, as far as I'm concerned. I had just finished putting on fresh clothes when Tracy came into the bedroom. Mom and Dad had a little quarrel today. Mom wants to stay with us for a few days until they settle their differences. I said she could do it. I hope you don't mind. What kind of husband would I be if I objected to my wife's mother staying for a few days? I asked rhetorically. Your parents deserve special attention. Look how good your father treats me. He's actually a great guy. Tracy seemed to study my face for any clues about how I was feeling. When I mentioned her father, she seemed to flinch slightly, but that could have been in my imagination. That's one of the reasons I love you so much, Mike. You always treat me and my family like we're special, Tracy replied. I've been working with your father for five years now. Knew him before I met you, and he is special. He gave me my first real job. He is a good boss an excellent father-in-law, and the best father a girl can have. For some reason, my praise of her father didn't sit well with Tracy as much as it should have. I had never noticed it before, but now, it seemed to me that Tracy was feeling guilty about her mother's extramarital affairs. Did I just not notice this before? Callie spent half of dinner asking me questions about work. I wanted to know what projects we had going on, what we were applying for, and where I was working that day. It was obvious that she was trying to find out how much I knew and how Jim ended up in the same hotel where the previous evening she had received the dish of the day. Identical. 
I avoided any mention of Jim being asked to bid for an upgrade at the adultery hotel or my involvement in the pool denouement. I decided that my wife and her mother weren't the only people who might have secrets. After dinner, I announced that I was going to mow the lawn. With my suspicions dominating my thoughts, I thoughtfully left my phone in recording mode behind a banana on the kitchen counter, away from the dishwasher. By the time I put the lawn mower away, it was already dark. Both women were watching The Revenant on TV in the living room. I put the phone in my pocket and said goodnight to them before heading upstairs to the master bedroom. After leaving the house, I listened to the recorded conversation between my wife and her mother. It was an eye-opening experience, to say the least. The two women discussed how to get Jim's forgiveness. They exchanged a few ideas, but basically it came down to Callie having sex with Jimmy until he could fully forgive and trust his unfaithful wife. My wife suggested that Callie increase the amount of below-the-belt manly caresses she gives Jim and let him have her ass from time to time. Callie wasn't thrilled with this option. Bentley insisted on it, but with his big guy it wasn't fun at all, Callie admitted. Jim has never shown much interest in my ass, and that suits me just fine. I only allow my lover to have it on special occasions, but the big, big Bentley made me reconsider this advantage. Who would have thought that the egg has a big guy? Tracy jokes. To be honest, I've heard some rumors, Callie admitted. Mom heard Mary Chase telling Sue Land about how big Bentley was, and she mentioned it to me. Grandma told you about this? I'm surprised she didn't try it on when Grandpa went on one of his golf trips. Your eyes are darting. Don't tell me that egg fucked Grandma. She's 62 years old or something like that, Tracy said with obvious amazement. That was a couple of years ago, and I hope to look as good as Mom when I'm her age, Callie said. Bentley gets very excited when he talks about how he slept with his mother and daughter. He even wanted me to ask if he could score a hat trick with you. Few men manage to get three generations in one family. Are you kidding? He is almost the same age as Dad, Tracy noted. I can't even imagine that I'll be with him. What size is his bull? Let's just say you won't be disappointed, Callie replied, as if she were recommending a good hairdresser. Just try so that I don't have to rock Bentley's little grandson on my lap. I've never cheated on Mike, and I certainly won't start with Adnoy Atsev, Tracy said. I want Mike to be the father of all our children. That's the only thing I'm sure of. I love this guy. I love your father, too. That's why it's all so hard. I don't want a divorce, Callie insisted. He just works so many hours and often comes home tired. We're lucky if we have sex a couple of times a week. That's why I needed a Bentley. Really, Mom? What about George Marsh, Jeff Stevens, and God knows who else? I don't like where this conversation is going. Let's go watch The Revenant. I think that big-ass Italian girl is going to get kicked out this week, Callie said, clearly trying to change the subject. I saved the conversation to a flash drive and went to bed, knowing that I would sleep very little that night. I had a lot to think about. Work the next day was excruciating. As Jim handed out work assignments to start the day, he was a complete mess. There were only five of us working at Wright's Electric, and we exchanged glances as Jim stammered through his instructions. As expected, Jim and I were working together on our current project, so he climbed into the passenger seat of the company SUV. We were wiring a house that was under construction so we could talk freely without fear of someone listening. No sooner had Jim begun telling me about his situation than he continued throughout the morning. I think it was cathartic for him, but it was even more of a shock for me. I had a hard time reconciling what I heard from my wife and her mother with the future I envisioned for myself. Will Tracy end up becoming a walking wife like her mother and apparently her grandmother? Will I have enough influence in her life to keep her faithful? Was the risk of a failed marriage or life as a cuckold worth it? Callie called me this morning, Jim began, and said she wanted to apologize for the impression she might have given me that she was cheating with Bentley. She calls this bastard Bentley. Said this is the only time she's ever cheated or even come close to it. He stalked her for months, and she finally succumbed to his charm and the fact that he has a single egg. I asked her how long her mother had been covering for her escapades, and she began to stutter. It never occurred to her that it was obvious to me that her mother had lied about her whereabouts. 
We exchanged a few nasty words, and I hung up. I didn't know whether to tell Jim what I had learned from the overheard conversation. If he decides to make peace, it will only make the situation worse. I decided not to make a decision, but I did it in a decisive manner. Jim, you need to take your time and find out what's really going on. Maybe it was the first time, maybe not. I suggest you think about the situation and all the consequences of your decision, whether you keep Callie or throw her to the curb. I feel sorry for you, Mike. You're married to my daughter, but you work with me, so you're in the middle of this mess. I feel like I wasted 25 years of my life. If it weren't for Tracy, I would have said that my married life was a meaningless sham. Having a wonderful daughter and a reliable son-in-law is the only salvation. Arriving home in the evening, I still had not decided on my further actions. As soon as I entered the kitchen, Tracy and her mother attacked me. Dad told Mom that you told him that Mom was in the pool with Bentley, Tracy said with more than a little irritation. What kind of asshole tries to ruin his wife's parents' marriage? Is it true? And what do you think I should have done? I asked more calmly than I felt. You could have told me that Jim was somewhere around and that I should get out of the pool, Callie interjected. It would be like a gentleman. I was afraid of depriving you of the pleasure of having an identical massage of your breasts in public. I was only thinking about you, although these naked charms of yours are damn distracting, I answered. It's not my fault that you and your mother are lying to Jim, that you're having sex with the one-ball wonder, that your breasts are visible to many, that Jim cooled off that arrogant bastard, and that you're trying to sell a bunch of crap to one of the best guys I have ever knew. Did you hear that Grandma lied to Jim? Tracy asked. It just gets worse and worse. You have no idea, I said. You knew that your mother and grandmother were sexually promiscuous sluts, and yet you lied to help them maintain that status. Now you're mad at me because your mother was so damn stupid that she allowed a lowlife bastard to play with her naked charms in public like it was my fault. I'll stand by my decision to be honest and open with Jim, while you two try to justify the fucking crap you've been doing to your dad and grandfather all these years. I saw the worry on Tracy's face as she considered my words. I have never cheated on you, and never will. I'm not like my mother and grandmother. I tried to help them keep their ugly secrets, but I hated it. I constantly told them to stop their affairs and be faithful to their husbands. Did you say? Callie asked, before Tracy could give her a death glare. I did. Callie unexpectedly agreed as Tracy's plight dawned on her. She said that she would never cheat on you and insisted that my mother and I begin to be faithful. I was wrong to let Bentley seduce me, but it will never happen again. I've learned my lesson, I swear. Did George Marsh and Jeff Stevens also have big manhoods in their pants, or were they just extremely convincing? I blurted out before I could keep my mouth shut. Tracy, did you tell Mike about George and Jeff? Gave me a way to save her ass? Callie demanded. How could Mike find out about them if you didn't tell him? Oh no! Callie screamed. Did you tell Jim about George and Jeff? What about Bill Simons? Does Jim know about him too? Not yet, I answered with a smile. The next day at work was interesting because of all these life-changing decisions. I told Jim everything I had overheard his wife and daughter discussing. He was angry as hell and then incredibly depressed. I don't see that I have a choice, Mike. I'm going to see a lawyer and get a divorce. Don't try to talk me out of this. I never dream it of this, I answered gloomily. I thought we could use the same lawyer and maybe get a better price. But Tracy said she never cheated on you, Jim objected. There is no reason for you to divorce Tracy. She loves you. I know he loves it. I know Callie loves you, but I wouldn't talk you out of getting a divorce. You're the only one who helped me make my decision, Jim. Without your wisdom and experience, I might have been tempted to stay with Tracy. You said you felt like you wasted 25 years being married to a cheater. I don't want to have to say the same thing 23 years from now. I have no trust left in your daughter. I will worry every day that she is looking for her manhood in bigger pants. I know damn well that Tracy will insist on allowing Kelly and Kelly's mother to see our children and influence their lives. Leaving my daughters alone with Tracy would be worrying enough, but letting your wife and her mother even talk to them scares the living daylights out of me, I admitted. You see why I can't continue down this path, don't you? Four years later, 
I decided to take my wife, Amber, out to celebrate our second anniversary. Our daughter, Megan, was six months old, and Amber's parents were more than happy to keep her overnight. Since it was our anniversary, I shelled out for a room at the Ritz, which was almost a hundred miles away. I made dinner reservations and couldn't wait to show my wife how much her love meant to me. I asked for a private table and was pleased when we were shown to a rather dark corner of the dining room. After ordering food and exchanging sexual jokes, Amber suddenly sat up straight and stared at the newcomer. Isn't this your ex-wife? She asked. I remember she was two years older than me at school and looked like a fashion model. She is still beautiful. I heard she got married again, but I never saw her husband. He looks like he's a little older than her. Actually, he's the same age as Tracy, I replied, turning to watch my ex-wife take a seat at the other end of the room. Well, that means he has a hard life. He looks old enough to be her father, Amber noted. This is not her husband. This guy only has one egg, I replied with a sigh. Four years ago, I made the right decision. Being with you and seeing Tracy fills me with relief and joy now. What does her husband look like? Amber asked, now that her curiosity was piqued. He looks just like that guy who walked through the door with a baseball bat in his hand, I replied silently thanking my lucky stars. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one. Listening to the next one. Listening to the next one.